Ooh, that's strong. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always, I'm reading with a vengeance. And as always, I hope you are as well. Today I am doing a book tag and it is the most exciting book tag ever. This tag was created by the very lovely Emma over at Book Break. She is also the host of the YouTube channel Drinking By My Shelf. Both channels I think are absolutely fabulous. Drinking By My Shelf obviously gives me major book channel name envy. That's for you, Emma. Anyways, Emma created this book tag and it looked like a lot of fun, so I decided to try it. Let's answer some questions. The first question is, what are three most exciting books you have hauled recently? Okay, so as you know, if you've watched my channel before, I don't go out book shopping very often. Usually my book hauls consist of library hauls. However, I did treat myself, I think a couple of weeks ago, so I do have one new book, but first one I have, I did get from the library and that is A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I have talked about this book before that this has been on my TBR for quite a while. And I finally, every time I go to the library, which is several times a week, I have looked for it and it's been checked out. So I was very happy to get my hands on it a couple days ago. Um, I have wanted to read this series. I can't remember which booktuber I watched who raved about this series. And I'm very new to sci-fi. However, I happened to read Becky Chambers' A uh, a Psalm for the Wild Built, which I have raved about uh, before. I will link the video that I talk about it up above. It's in one of my wrap-ups. And I absolutely loved it. I only picked it up because it met a prompt in a uh, reading challenge that I'm doing, the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge by Chantel over at Chantel Reads All Day. And I just happened to pick it up because it's a novella, it's very small. Uh, and it met a prompt for March and I read it and I absolutely loved it. And I, don't you just love it when a book takes you by surprise? You're just kind of reading it for whatever reason, not because you're excited to read it for you know, sometimes we read books for other than that reason and it takes you by surprise and I end up absolutely loving it. Anyways, I digress. I finally got my hands on this one and I'm super excited about it. The book that I treated myself to uh, when my husband and I went to the bookstore a couple of weeks ago is My Policeman by Beth Ann Roberts. I'm not a huge fan of this cover, but it was the only one that was available and I'm super excited about this one. So I heard about this one because I have a huge inappropriate crush on Harry Styles <laughs> and I found out that he is making this movie. And so when I found out he's making this movie, I looked at, of course, the movie. Of course, it said it's based on a book. It's based on a book and I'm interested in the movie. I always want to read the book first. So when I saw this was available, I grabbed it and I'm super excited about it. If you haven't heard about it, um, it takes place in the 50s and I'll just read you a little blurb. Marion first catches sight of Tom. He teaches her to swim. Marion is smitten, determined her love alone will be enough for them both. A few years later, Tom meets Patrick, a curator at the Brighton Museum. Patrick is besotted and opens Tom's eyes to a glamorous, sophisticated new world of art, travel, and beauty. Tom is their policeman, and in this age, it is safer for him to marry Marion and meet Patrick in secret. secret. The two lovers must share him until one of them breaks and three lives are destroyed. So, ooh, inspired by the real life relationship the novelist E.M. Forrester had with the policeman, Bob Buckingham and his wife, May. My Policeman is a deeply heartfelt story of love's passionate endurance and the devastation wrought by a repressive society. So excited about this one. And the third book that I recently hauled that I'm super excited about, I got on my Kindle and I only bought it because it was on sale for like $3. And that is The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Augustini. This is on the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction. As I've said in a previous video, I am trying to read some of the books, um, not all of them, on the long list for the Women's Prize uh, for Fiction. And um, I've gotten through the sentence, I've gotten through the final revival of Opal and Nev. I'm currently reading Great Circle, which is amazing, by the way. And this one was on sale, so I was super happy to, to get it and not pay full price for it. So yes, and uh, if you don't know what this one is about, 
This is about Alethea Lopez. She is, uh, I believe, a Spanish woman, and uh, she is in a, an abusive relationship, and she witnesses the murder of a woman. And once she does, she starts to come face to face with her own abuse, abusive relationship. I believe the affair that she's having with her boss, and it goes from there. So I'm super excited that I uh, have my hands on that one, and, or that I've hauled that one recently, and I'm super excited to read it. Question number two is, which three books are you most excited to get your hands on that I don't have already? Okay, so the first one that I can think of is I'm the Girl by Courtney Summers. Courtney Summers wrote Sadie, and I Sadie was one of the books I read last year that ended up being one of my favorites last year. And uh, if you don't know, Sadie is about a young woman who want who wants to solve the murder of her younger sister so she kind of goes out on this trek and doing her own investigation to find out who murdered her younger sister then there's a dual kind of storyline going of a podcaster who is she runs she or he i can't even remember the if it's male or female um runs her own true crime podcast and it turns out that sadie has also gone missing and the podcaster is trying to find out what happened to Sadie. And I end up listening to it. And if you get a chance, try to listen to it because it's great. Because the part that, uh, that it's following Sadie is from Sadie's point of view. But then the part that's following a podcast, it's almost like you're listening to a true crime podcast. And if you like those, you'll really enjoy Sadie. Anyways, all that to say that Courtney Summers is coming out with a new book. It comes out in September. Goodreads says, when 16-year-old Georgia Avis discovers the dead body of a 13-year-old Ashley James, she teams up with Ashley's older sister, Nora, to find and bring the killer to justice before he strikes again. But their investigation throws Georgia into a world of unimaginable pri privilege and wealth without conscience or without conscience or consequence. And as Ashley's killer closes in, Georgia will discover when money, power, and beauty rule, it might not be a matter of who is guilty, but who is guiltiest. Mm. So I'm super excited about that one. The second book I'm super excited to get my hands on is Mad Honey by Jodi Picot and Jennifer Finney Boylan. So it's duly written by these two authors. Jodi Picot is an automatic buy for me. Well, buy, automatic checkout from the library. Anyways, I'm still making my way through uh, her backlist but I've read most of her books and she rarely lets me down. Mad Honey comes out in October. So from what I gather, Mad Honey follows Olivia, who has this perfect life uh, living in Boston with her husband and her son, Asher. Uh, but then she discovers a darker side of her husband. I believe he turns abusive and she leaves him and she moves away to a small town in New Hampshire with her son. And then it also follows Lily, who's a young high school girl who moves to the same town with her mother, also kind of starting new for whatever reason, not sure what it is. And Lily and Asher become friends. And then Lily turns up dead and Asher is to blame. And it goes from there. And this just sounds like a plot that Jody Picoult is absolutely a master at. If you've watched, if you've read My Sister's Keeper, if you've read The Pact, if you've read 19 Minutes, Small Great Things, I can tell that this is going to have a whopper of a twist and it's going to be great. So I can't wait to get my hands on that one. So the third one was a little bit more difficult for me because as I've said previously, I don't research what new releases are coming out unless it's by an author that I'm really excited about. I just, it's just not something I do. So to come up with the third one, I was just kind of, I did research what books are coming out for the rest of the year. And one did stick out that looks like it's right up my street and it's called What the Fireflies Knew by Kai Harris. So this one, I saw that it was a coming of age story from the perspective of an 11 year old girl and I really didn't have to read much. Coming of age stories are really a sweet spot for me. I really love uh, those types of stories. And then when it's from the, uh, especially if it's from the point of view of whoever's coming of age, I really think that this is gonna be something that I will enjoy. So I am looking forward to that one. It is already out, but I think it's independently published. I'm, 
I'm not quite sure, but it's not like I've seen it on the shelves or seen it advertised here and there. So I think it, it uh, came out in February, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's already out. It's just a matter of me getting my hands on it. So after her father dies of an overdose and the debts incurred from his addiction caused the loss of the family home in Detroit, almost 11-year-old Kenyatta Bernice known as KB and her teenage sister Nia are sent by their overwhelmed mother to live with their estranged grandfather in Lansing. Over the course of a single sweltering summer, KB attempts to get her bearings in a world that is turned upside down. Pinballing between resentment, abandonment, and loneliness, KB is forced to carve out a different identity for herself and find her own voice. As she examines the jagged pieces of her recently shattered world, she learns that while some truths cut deep, a new life and a new KB can be built from the shards. Sounds amazing. Question number three, which author are you most excited to write another book? Super easy, this one, Gillian Flynn, absolutely. I have read uh, the four that she has out, of course, Gone Girl, Sharp Objects, Dark Places, and her short story, The Grown Up. So I'm ready, Gillian, if you're watching. Of course you're watching. Why wouldn't you be watching? Anyway, <laughs> Gillian, I'm sending vibes out to you. I hope you're working. I hope you're working on something new and I'm super excited for it, whatever it may be. Question number four is, which is the series you're most excited to get the next installment in? Also super easy question to answer, as I've already banged on about a Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, not only in this video, but I think in at least two other videos. So that is a first in a series. And the second one comes out in July, I believe. It's called the Monk and Robot series. And uh, the second in the series is called A Prayer for the Crown Shy. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe it comes either in June or July. So I'm super excited for that one because I love it. And then the second series, it only asks for one, but also gone on and on about Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin. Absolutely love that book. Loved it. Five star. Will probably be a favorite this year. And it's a duology. So um, the second one is Blood for Blood. And I am very much looking forward to reading that. I'm hoping to get to that either in May or June. Question number five is which film or TV adaptation are you most excited for? This was a hard one because there are so many. I mean, people are talking about The Nightingale. I absolutely love The Nightingale. That was a five-star read for me, and I'm super looking forward to the movie with the what uh, the Fanning sisters playing the sisters. I'm looking forward to that one. Of course, a lot of people are talking about Where the Crawdads Sing. I enjoyed The Cra Crawdads, but I didn't love it like everybody else did, so I'll probably watch it. I'm not waiting on the edge of my seat for it. I heard they're remaking Salem's Lot. I'm sorry, Gemma, but... I am super excited for that. I think that's gonna be a feature film. So I'm super excited about that. As y'all know, I love my Stephen King. They've made a mini series of Pachinko that's already out, uh, I believe, or at least the first couple of episodes. And uh, that's on my list to watch. And I'm very excited about that. That was another five-star read for me. They're making, I believe, a series of Octavia Butler's Kindred. Super excited about that. But I have to say the one that I'm most excited for is The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery. I love that book so much. That was another one of those books that took me by surprise. I don't even remember why I picked it up or where I had heard about it. They're making a full length movie on for that. And um, I think it's still in production. If you don't know, it follows A.J. Fickery, obviously. He is a bookstore owner in a small town and he has terrible things have happened to him. His wife has died. He's had some collection in his bookstore stolen, um, some other things, and he's just in a bad way. And then all of a sudden a package is left for him at the bookstore and it changes his life. And it's just a delight to read, just, just magical. And if you haven't read it, and especially if you're enchanted by stories that take place in a bookshop, it's wonderful. Finally, question number six is, which videos are you most excited to see on BookTube this year? Okay, yes. So I would say the first one uh, would be, I love the mid-year freak out tag. I only started watching those uh, last year when they came out and they were so much fun to watch and I'm super excited to make my own. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing those. I love end of year 
uh, book videos of people's favorites of the entire year. My TBR skyrockets, um, but there's so much fun to either find books that I, that were not on my radar or get that extra motivation for a book that's been on my TBR, but I've just kind of been dancing around it. And then to have somebody rave about it and it be a favorite of the year, then it kind of moves up my TBR list or just favorites of my own and to hear somebody else rave about it too. And just to gab on about them in the comment section about those books that we mutually loved. That's super fun for me. And then finally the book videos that I'm really excited to see. I follow a lot of smaller booktubers. Uh, and when I say smaller booktubers, I'm talking like 100, 200, 300 subscribers. What I would love to see is those booktubers do their 1000 subscriber Q and A videos. That would be super exciting for me. Uh, so I would be very happy to see those videos happen. So that's it. That is the most exciting book tag ever. Those are the answers to my questions. I hope you enjoyed them. Who am I going to tag? Okay, I tag Kate Crafter over at Kate Crafter. If you are unfamiliar with her channel, go give her a watch. She's fantastic. She is a smaller booktuber, but she is, she's got this dry sense of humor. She reads some very eclectic genres of books and she talks about movies that she watches and she's just a hoot. So Kate Crafter, if you happen to be watching, I tag you. The other person I tag, Jack from Jack in the Bookstack. She is also a newer booktuber and she is such a delight to watch. You can tell she's excited about what she talks about. She recently did a video on why she decided to break down and buy a Kindle Paperwhite after reading books on her iPad and she compares the two. She gives the pros and cons of each. I read uh, my Kindle books on my iPad as well, and I have been eyeballing that paper white for a while, and she might have just <whistles> sent me over the edge to buy it. So anyways, Jack, you are tagged. If anybody else watching thinks that this would be fun to do, consider yourself tagged. Or if you'd just like to answer the questions yourself down in the comments, I would be very excited to read your answers. I love these tags. I love hearing other people's answers, so please feel free to do that. If you are still watching, I would really appreciate, in the words of Sin over at Rog Lobster Streams, give that like button a boop. She gave me permission to say that. And a subscribe would be very appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.